Welcome! In this video, we describe standards-based instruction for students with significant cognitive disabilities. At the TIE Center, the National Technical Assistance Center for Inclusive Practices and Policies, we notice confusion about how alternate standards can be used as a tool to promote inclusion and high expectations for students with significant cognitive disabilities. A group of students with and without disabilities together in a school hallway smiling. The presenters are Jessica Bowman, Ph.D., and Debbie Taub, Ph.D. Specifically, we'll discuss the difference between alternate achievement standards and core academic standards. We'll answer the questions, what should curriculum and instruction look like for students with significant cognitive disabilities? What are the standards and how do they align and differ? How might you use one standard over the other? And what are some resources to help? For students with significant cognitive disabilities, there are some key considerations for what curriculum and instruction should look like. First, curriculum and instruction should begin with the universal design for learning. It should be based on the same grade level standards and curriculum. It should cover the same content areas as their peers without disabilities. And lastly, it should be age appropriate and have individualized materials. Curriculum and instruction should not be based on lower grade level content standards, be limited to what is assessed on the alternate assessment, or be a separate curriculum only for students who participate in the alternate assessment. A TIE's brief titled The General Education Curriculum, Not an Alternate Curriculum. On the cover of the brief are three elementary age students working together at a table. They each have a paper and pencil in front of them. The Every Student Succeeds Act says that all states must adopt challenging academic standards. For students with significant cognitive disabilities, the law permits states to develop alternate achievement standards for assessment purposes. A flowchart. A box on the left has the heading Instruction. A subheading reads All Students. Inside the box are the words Content Standards. Determine the meaning of words and phrases as they are used in a text, including figurative, connotative, and technical meanings. From this box, there are two arrows pointing to two separate boxes on the right. These two boxes are under the heading Assessment. The top box subheading reads Most Students. Inside the box are the words State Content Standards. The bottom box subheading reads Students with Significant Cognitive Disabilities. Inside the box are the words Alternate Achievement Standards. Identify multiple meanings of a word. Because the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act mandates that all students should have access to the general education curriculum in the least restrictive environment, this means that ideally all students receive instruction that is based on their state's content standards for their grade level. The flowchart from the previous slide. The left part of the flowchart is highlighted with an outline. This area has the heading Instruction. A subheading reads All Students. Inside the box are the words content standards. Determine the meaning of words and phrases as they are used in a text, including figurative, connotative, and technical meanings. Standards also serve another function, and that is for assessment. Standards set the bar for how much of the standard and to what degree the standard will be assessed. For example, this content standard states, determine the meaning of words and phrases as they are used in a text, including figurative, connotative, and technical meanings. Alternate academic achievement standards are reduced in depth, breadth, and complexity. An alternate academic achievement standard that aligns with the content standard we just read could be to identify the, the multiple meanings of a word. Maintaining those state content standards as the basis for student instruction ensures that all students are held to the highest expectation and are given access to the curriculum, and in this case, ensuring that instruction includes how those words are used in a text. The flowchart from the previous two slides. The right part of the flowchart is highlighted with an outline. There are two boxes under the heading Assessment. The top box subheading reads Most Students. Inside the box are the words State Content Standards. The bottom box subheading reads Students with Significant Cognitive Disabilities. Inside the box are the words Alternate Achievement Standards. Identify multiple meanings of a word. So what does it mean for instruction if we teach to the state standards versus the state alternate academic achievement standards? Well, it really comes down to expectations and the least dangerous assumption. Are we starting with high expectations for our students or 
Are we expecting them only to have instruction in a tiny part of the standard? Two elementary age school children standing outside. One child has their arm around the shoulder of the other child. Amanda Raymond, a mom, talks about the difference for her child when people changed their understanding and their beliefs about her son and changed their expectations. A video still of a parent, Amanda Raymond, looking into the camera. With good intentions, we oftentimes inadvertently pigeonhole our children because of what we think they can or cannot do. For many years, my son, who has autism and has limited expressive language skills, He's been provided the same instruction in school, instruction for beginning developmental and early learners, because he struggled to express what he knows and struggled to generalize skills from classroom to classroom. So for years, we conducted evaluation after evaluation where psychologists attempted to collect information from standardized tests, only to come back to report very low IQ scores. So for years... My 14-year-old son was never presented higher than a kindergarten level curriculum. Just last year in the summer of 2020, we switched schools and engaged with new staff who refused to believe that he couldn't. And in six months, we went from doing kindergarten sight words to second grade spelling words. Every day we were learning that he knew more than what we had previously believed. With those high expectations and with the right supports, my son was finally learning. He was finally making progress, and we were so hopeful for what was to come. Furthermore, triennial evaluations were conducted in November 2020 that revealed an increase in IQ by almost 40 points. The report showed that from all previous school evaluations, he went from a nonverbal IQ score of 42 to an 81. How can we deny the opportunity because of what we might believe one is capable of doing? With the right supports and high expectations, I have so much hope for my son's future. Consider this in terms of how and what is taught. Think about the alternate academic achievement standard as a part of the standard, but the standard is what gives us context and understanding. For instance, using this picture of a circle with a green A in it, if you had to teach this information, what would you teach and how? Some teachers might use tactile learning for letters and shapes. Others might use discrete trials to practice this is an A, while others work on the colors white, black, and green. The achievement expectation might be that students identify the letter A, and the assessment could be to have the student touch the letter A. Now let's add the second component, a plus sign. A white plus sign inside a black square. Does this give us more context for what we want students to know and understand? For most people, no, not really. It is just a plus sign with no connection to the A, but it does give more instructional ideas. We can add identifying the symbol. If there's no further context or big picture, then both of these things are separate facts without meaning or understanding. Now let's look at the full picture of what was being taught. It is a game controller. A black handheld game controller with a green A and three other buttons on the right and a plus sign directional button on the left. By focusing on those two small discrete parts of the whole, the student never got the big picture of the controller. Rather than having an understanding that this controller can cause things to happen with a character on a screen, students know an A and a plus sign, which in this case is not even a plus sign, but rather directional controls. In essence, for students who struggle with attention, generalizations, and making sense of the world, we have taken away any natural clues and context that would engage a student or help them make sense of learning. This is what it's like if we only use the alternate academic achievement standards to inform instruction. So let's look again at the difference between academic content standards and alternate academic achievement standards. The content standards provide the entire context of what students are learning. It gives them the idea that the controller is there to control the video game. The achievement standards might be one small piece of that content standard that you're going to be assessed on but it's not the entire thing that you're learning. Teaching about those buttons without that larger context 
is really difficult for students to be able to make then make generalizations or to support long and short term memory recollection because they have nothing to connect it to in the real world. We need to ask ourselves, how can standards support high expectations? The title, Examining What We Think We Know, and a subtitle, Misperception. Based on the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act and the Every Student Succeeds Act, many would say that the law permits the use of alternate content standards. However, in reality, we know that alternate academic achievement standards were designed to be performance standards, not content standards because the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act mandates that all students have access to and make progress in the general education curriculum, which they define as the same curriculum as for non-disabled students. Another misperception is that the law permits a separate curriculum for students with disabilities. In reality, we know that there may be supplementary curriculum but all students have access to the same core curriculum. Imagine you're in a sixth grade math class working on describing proportional relationships. At the top, you'll see the standard that all students are working toward. On the left side of the slide is the task that most students are completing. On the right side is the same task adapted for a student with a significant cognitive disability. On the left of the screen is a worksheet divided into four quadrants. The top left quadrant is titled Equation and has handwritten text that says P equals 10H. The top right quadrant is titled Table and has a printed table with two rows and five columns. The two header rows are titled X and Y. A student has filled in each cell with handwritten numbers. The bottom left quadrant is titled Graph and has a printed X and Y axis. The student has handwritten the X and Y axis labels and drawn a line graph. The bottom right quadrant is titled Summary and has the handwritten words for every hour you work, you get $10. On the right of the screen is a worksheet divided into four quadrants. The top left quadrant is titled Equation, Circle 1. There are three choices to circle. Pay equals 10 times hours. Hours equals 10 times pay. And $1 equals pay times hours. The student has circled the top choice. The top right quadrant is titled Table. There is a table with two rows and five columns. The row headers are hours and pay. In each cell, there is an image of a $10 bill that indicates how many $10 bills you get for each hour worked. For example, one hour shows the image of one $10 bill as pay. Two hours shows the image of two $10 bills as pay. The bottom left quadrant is titled graph and has a printed X and Y axis. The student has handwritten in the line graph, but not the X and Y axis labels. The bottom right quadrant is titled Summary, Circle 1. There are three choices. For every paycheck, you get $10. For each hour, you get 10 paychecks. For every hour you work, you get 10 paychecks. The student has circled the bottom choice. When you look between the two, you will see that they are demonstrating understanding of the same standard. They are developing an equation showing how much you'll earn um, if you work so many hours at $10 an hour making a table, a graph, and writing a summary of that proportional relationship on the bottom right corner. When planning a lesson aligned with the previous standard, one might look for an alternate academic achievement standard when teaching a student with a significant cognitive disability. Here's what you might find. An academic standard with a math problem example below it. The standard is, use a ratio to model or describe a relationship. The steps to achieve the standard are, Recognize set slash subset, recognize slash explain fraction, and recognize slash explain ratio. The example math problem has three boxes that contain different numbers and notations. The first box has the number 5, the second box has the number 0 0.75, and the third box has the ratio of 3 to 4. The problem directions say, touch the ratio, nice job. And given this alternate academic achievement standard, an educator may simply ask a student with a significant cognitive disability to identify from these three numbers which is a ratio. You can see how when we use alternate academic achievement standards as the goal, as the ceiling, expectations for teaching and learning 
can be significantly decreased. Title that reads Comparing Standards. The left text box has an image of a handheld game controller with the title Content Standards and the text Identify the Constant of Proportionality, Unit Rate, in tables, graphs, equations, diagrams, and verbal descriptions of proportional relationships. The right text box has an image of the isolated plus sign pulled from the handheld game controller with the title Alternate Achievement Standard and the text Use a Ratio to Model or Describe a Relationship. Recognize set slash subset, recognize slash explain fraction, and recognize slash explain ratio. Thinking back on the video game controller metaphor, we can see how the content standard provides students and teachers with the context to truly come to an understanding of the skills they are learning and teaching, whereas the alternate academic achievement standard can sometimes ask for such a small part of the standard to be demonstrated that the whole picture is lost leaving teachers and students wondering why they are focusing on skills that seem irrelevant. In summary, we know that academic content standards are for planning instruction so that we ensure that all students have access to instruction based on standards that were developed for college, career, and community readiness. A worksheet divided into four quadrants. The top left quadrant is titled Equation, Circle 1. There are three choices to circle. Pay equals 10 times hours. Hours equals 10 times pay. And $1 equals pay times hours. The student has circled the top choice. The top right quadrant is titled table. There is a table with two rows and five columns. The row headers are hours and pay. In each cell, there is an image of a $10 bill that indicates how many $10 bills you get for each hour worked. For example, one hour shows the image of one $10 bill as pay. Two hours shows the image of two $10 bills as pay. The bottom left quadrant is titled graph and has a printed X and Y axis. The student has handwritten in the line graph, but not the X and Y axis labels. The bottom right quadrant is titled summary, circle one. There are three choices. For every paycheck, you get $10. For each hour, you get 10 paychecks. For every hour you work, you get 10 paychecks. The student has circled the bottom choice. On the other hand, alternate academic achievement standards can still be used as a tool. Not only are they used for assessment purposes, but they could also be used as, as a source for pre and reteaching as a part of the full lesson. They could also be used to develop goals to embed instruction on, on specific skills within the general education content and lessons. A worksheet divided into four quadrants. The top left quadrant is titled Equation, Circle 1. There are three choices to circle. Cups of ginger ale equals two times cups of juice. Cups of punch equals two times cups of juice. Cups of juice equals two times cups of ginger ale. The student has circled the top choice. The top right quadrant is titled table. There is a table with two rows and five columns. The row headers are cups of juice and cups of ginger ale. The column headers are one, two, three, and four. In each cell, there is an image of a measuring cup that indicates how many cups of ginger ale are needed for each cup of juice. For example, one cup of juice shows the image of two cups of ginger ale. Two cups of juice shows the image of four cups of ginger ale. The bottom left quadrant is titled graph and has a printed X and Y axis. The student has handwritten in the line graph, but not the X and Y axis labels. The bottom right quadrant is titled summary, circle one. There are three choices. For every cup, you get two cups. For each cup of juice, you need two cups of ginger ale. For every two cups of juice, you need one cup of juice. The student has circled the second choice. For more information on this topic, you can use the TIES Center of Resources, such as the TIES Brief No. 4, Providing Meaningful General Education Curriculum Access to Students with Significant Cognitive Disabilities. TIES Brief No. 5, The General Education Curriculum, Not an Alternate Curriculum. And the TIES Tips No. 14, that covers academic standards for students with significant cognitive disabilities. Another resource is the Comprehensive Inclusive Education, General Education and the Inclusive IEP resource. A screenshot of the TIES IEP planning process from the TIES Center website. The tool shows the four parts of the planning process. This is an IEP planning process that begins with a collaborative conversation, includes pointers for creating an inclusive IEP, and an education day at a glance. Finally, We know that ongoing collaboration is how the IEP comes to life as educators work together to make it happen. 
A teacher sitting behind and overseeing a group of students writing on worksheets in a classroom. A resource to support instructional planning is the 51545 tool, also found at the Thai Center website. A screenshot of the 51545 tool available from the Thai Center website. The image includes three clock icons, one clock icon showing five minutes highlighted, one showing 15 minutes highlighted, and one showing 45 minutes highlighted. Below the clocks are bullet points showing options teachers have based on whether they have 5, 15, or 45 minutes available. The 51545 is designed for educational teams to collaborate. This includes general and special educators and related service providers if appropriate. Together, they can use the 51545 to co-plan, teach, and assess standards-based instruction for all students, including those with significant cognitive disabilities. It was developed with educators' tight schedules in mind, with options for when teachers have 5 minutes, 15 minutes, or 45 minutes for collaborative planning. It's really helpful for designing instruction for the whole standard, even if only a small part of the standard is assessed. All of these resources can be found at www.tiescenter.org. Thank you for viewing this video and check out more resources from the Thai Center. Thai Center is supported through a cooperative agreement with the Research to Practice Division, Office of Special Education Programs, U.S. Department of Education. Project Officer, Susan Weigert. Op opinions expressed herein do not necessarily reflect the position or policy of the U.S. Department of Education. The National Center on Educational Outcomes, or NCEO, leads the Thai Center Partnership. There are six additional collaborating partners, Arizona Department of Education, CAST, University of Cincinnati, University of Kentucky, University of North Carolina Charlotte, and University of North Carolina Greensboro.